I'm in the small town of Cambria with family for a few days, and I thought, I wonder if they made a movie in Cambria. Then I can make a filming location video on it while I'm here. And they did. And that movie is Arachnophobia. Spiders. Why did it have to be spiders? Join me on this creepy crawly adventure in and around Cambria, California, checking out the filming locations. That is unless you have arachnophobia. The movie starts off in Venezuela, where a bunch of scientists are going to study butterflies. While there, they also notice that a large species of spiders exists. An American photographer on the team gets bit by one of the spiders and dies instantly. His body gets boarded up and is sent back to the US along with a stowaway, a large spider. The first scene filmed in Cambria is an aerial shot that goes over the ocean and over some rocks and flies towards Moonstone Drive. Just five minutes away in downtown Cambria, it's actually pretty sunny right now. But over here by the coast, along the beach, the fog is as thick as spider webs right now. Driving over the bridge is a hearst carrying the American photographer that got killed over in Venezuela. As you can see, this bridge has been remodeled since the movie came out in 1990. But if we go on Google Maps and go back to about 2008, it still looks almost exactly the same as the movie. Now one thing that hasn't changed and is still there since the movie came out is that windmill over there. That windmill is still there and can be seen in the movie. The next scene is a shot coming down Burton Drive, overlooking downtown Cambria. Now off to the right, they put a sign that said, Welcome to Canema. In the movie, Cambria is called Canema. I guess Cambria didn't want to be associated as a town with a spider infestation. The Welcome to Canema sign was somewhere right over by this tree. But one sign that's in the movie and is still there is that yellow sign way at the end. Let's walk over there and see what it says. And it says, no outlet. Ah, oh, great. Where am I gonna plug my cell phone in? This place has no outlets. Before we get too far, if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, that would really help me out. Thank you so much. The body of the American photographer killed in Venezuela was brought here to this antique store. I mean, how old did they think that guy was? Just kidding. In the movie, this is the Kendall Funeral Home. And once inside, it is revealed that something very gruesome has happened to his corpse. The killer from Venezuela escapes up the side door. They built a doggy door specifically for the movie right here. This little wooden fence was not there in 1990. That large spider with a star in his own right. And his name? Big Bob. Big Bob is a species of bird-eating tarantula native to the Amazon. He was supplied by famed animal and reptile wrangler, Jules Sylvester. 
production painted stripes and added a prosthetic to make Bob even bigger. Then out of the sky, a black crow flies down, picks up Big Bob. But that was a bad move because remember, Big Bob is a species of bird-eating tarantula. He kills that crow and escapes onto the property of the new residents, the Jennings family. But where were the barn and house set located? I found an old Entertainment Weekly article from 1990 called Behind the Scenes of Arachnophobia. And in that article, the reporter is in Cambria on the barn and house set. So I know that the barn and house were built in Cambria and the sets were probably torn down after filming was completed. So we can use the hillside in this frame to kind of narrow down where the sets would have been. I thought flying the drone in the air would give me a better perspective, but I actually get a better view of what it looked like in the movie from the top of the hill on Eaton Road. As you can see by matching the hills in the background, I'm just slightly at the wrong angle. I mean, for all I know, the house and the barn could have been built where this school sits right now. I need to find out how old that school is and I gotta do some more research on this. But I wanna find out exactly where the house and the barn set were built. I know we're nearby where they built those sets of the barn and the house. My spider senses are tingling. I know we're nearby. Back to the film, the Jennings family find a female spider in the house and take it out to the barn to set it free. Little did they know, an even larger male spider was entering the building. So Big Bob and his lady friend hit it off immediately, some kind of love at first sight. Bob's apparently a leg man and she's got eight of them. So in the barn, Bob puts on a little berry white, they're rolling in the hay, they're getting caught up in web. And plot twist, Bob gets her pregnant and she has babies, lots and lots of babies. Hundreds or thousands of mutant spider babies. That's a lot of child support. Ah, oh, crap. Excuse me. This building has been completely rebuilt or remodeled. Uh, leaving. Mm. A little late though. Mm. This is where Jeff Daniels character gets a ticket right outside the office of the original doctor in Kanema. Behind Jeff Daniels, you can see this A-frame building, which is a firehouse. The A-frame building is still there to this day. Enough, Lloyd Carson. The young doctor comes to Kanema, and you write him a parking ticket? What are you doing, Miss Hollings? The whole town ought to be doing it. Check out that sign in the background. The Cambria Pines Lodge sign is still there to this day. So Mrs. Hollins and Ross Jennings walk down Burton Street. And when they get to Mrs. Holland's car, look at all the greenery behind her. So this is where her car would have been, and across the street, there's still a lot of trees and vegetation over there. Just down the road is the building where Ross sets up his own medical practice. Jeff Daniels had his practice in the movie. Now in real life, this office is empty. So if you want to start your own business, you can start your own business in what is technically a filming location, which is pretty cool. Now across the way is another office building, but what's odd is in the movie, the number is 12. In real life, this is number 10. Can you believe it? Casa de Oro Fine Jewelry is still here. It's been in business here at this location for at least over 30 years. Pretty awesome. It's pretty cool that Jeff Daniels plays a doctor in this movie. 
Little did he know that four years later, he would get dumber and dumber, and he would land the role that he would become best known for. <laughs> that really is his best work. The first spider death in Kanema wasn't actually filmed in Cambria. It was filmed about a half an hour away in the town of Paso Robles. Let's go over there now. Well, I drove all the way out here and they're closed for a private event. Which is a real bummer, because now I can't go in there and light up any shots like I wanted to. Well, we're just gonna have to stay on the outside to look at this building. This is the home of the old lady, Margaret Collins. And she's throwing a large party for Ross Jennings and his family. Kind of a meet and greet for the whole town. Here's the side yard where the garden party took place. And it was quite a production. I can only imagine the filmmakers were there for quite a few days. They had the whole cast here, plus extras, including the mutant spiders, played by the Avondale Spider. The Avondale Spider can be found in Australia and Avondale, New Zealand, where they get their name. Over 300 of them were supplied for the movie. And unlike the film, the Avondale Spider is relatively harmless to humans. And on this day, one of them is crawling right through the front door of Margaret Hollis's home. Filmmakers released a bunch of those Avondale spiders out here for a few of these scenes. Are you trying to tell me the filmmakers collected all those Avondale spiders? I got a feeling one of them escaped and mated with a native spider, creating some real life mutant spiders. This is where the second spider death happens, right here at Coast Union High School. You'll see the interior of this building. You won't see the exterior, but you will see the shape of the building as Jeff Daniels and the coach walk through the gymnasium. Now, although the city of Cambria didn't want to be associated with that spider infestation, the high school was all for it. You even see them wearing Coast Union High School jackets. The gymnasium's closed, but that's okay because the spider bite happened over on the football field. These bleachers have been updated since 1990. The spider crawls into the receiver's helmet. And right as he's about to catch the ball, he gets bit.
In another scene, you see Jeff Daniels, John Goodman, and another actor drive down this road and take a right right here, where in 1990, this was a gas station. As you can see, it's no longer a gas station. It's some kind of hair salon now. In 1990, the average price of gas was $1.15. In California, it's probably about $1.45. Right now, in 2022, gas prices are floating between $6 and $6.25, somewhere in that area. Boy, I sure would love to go back to 1990 prices. There's also a little bit of movie magic right here. When they come flying down this road and take a right and tear up this hill, they go on and on in the movie, but in real life, it's a dead end. Here's one quick scene. Uh, the same trio of actors drive up this street, driving past the Living Waters Church. church parking only. I better get out of here. This is where the third death happens, right here at the home of the funeral owner, Mr. Kendall. Mr. Kendall got home just in time to watch Wheel of Fortune with his wife, but they should have been watching Jeopardy because their lives were in Jeopardy that very night. Jeff Daniels and John Goodman and that other guy raced over here, but they were too late. The Kendalls were already dead. And as you can see, the spider crawled right out Mr. Kendall's nose. <laughs> hey, they love a dark, damp place. <laughs> I saw arachnophobia. Oh, that's good. In 1990, and I remember seeing it in the theater. I remember seeing it in the LA area with my family and with my grandma and my grandpa. And I remember the whole theater screaming. And it was so intense and traumatizing that I had not seen arachnophobia since that time in the theater in 1990 until a few weeks ago in preparation for this video. Towards the end of the film, our main trio of actors come back to the Kendall Mortuary to try and figure out the location of the spider nest. They put a map of Kanema on the hood of a truck and figure out the location of the spider nest. This here in the center, that's a mortuary, right? No, that's a house. Well, who the hell lives here? I do. Which leads to the last half hour of the movie, which is probably the scariest part of the whole movie. Lots of jump scares and lots of spiders. Thanks for joining me on this adventure through Cambria and the greater Paso Robles area, checking out the filming locations to Arachnophobia. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a like. If you haven't subscribed, please do. That really helps me out. And if you're a Cambria local and were around in 1990 and know where the location is of the house and barn, please let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, see you next time. Bye. Here's a bonus location for making it this far in the video. This establishing shot is not filmed in Cambria or Paso Robles, it's actually on the Warner Brothers back lot. I thought I recognized that building and I was right, it's on the Warner Brothers back lot. Alright, bye!